The following is a presentation of TFNN. Next up, uh, we're going to go to uh, Florida, Titusville. Nick, uh, thanks for hanging on the line. How are you doing today? Hi, yourself, sir? I'm doing well. Uh, Ken, I want to say I, I'm 84 years old, and the way you explain things makes it very easy to follow. That's uh, very, that. very, uh, very nice of you to say, Nick. I appreciate that uh, very much. Have a good day, sir. All right, you too. Live at TFNN. Breakout Investing with your host, Ken Shreve. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Monday. Welcome to another edition of Breakout Investing on TFNN, 877-927-6648. That is the number to use to get through if you want to talk to me about this market. Uh, Breakout Investing now airs five days a week on TFNN from 3 to 4 Eastern. If you can't listen to the show live, uh, don't worry. A couple hours after the show is finished, you can pick up the podcast on iTunes, and don't forget you can also listen to uh, all TFNN programming on your smartphone. Uh, very easy, just open your smartphone browser, type in tfnn.mobi, and you can listen to the stream that way as well. Don't forget to check out Tiger TV on the homepage of tfnn.com, channel one. The show is carried live, and it is archived on channel 13. Uh, Tiger TV, you can, of course, listen to the show, but you can also watch uh, and look at charts live right along with me. Speaking of charts, let's start off by taking a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average today. The blue chip index up 78.5 points, about six tenths of a percent to 13,000. 407. You can see here the 50-day simple moving average. Nice little bounce off the line. Volume on the New York Stock Exchange. Surprise, surprise, not all that impressive. Uh, Friday on the NYSE, we had about 611 million shares. We're tracking very close to that. Uh, today, 611 million shares is slightly uh, below average. Uh, let's swing over, take a look at the S&P 500. We'll see a Similar situation with the benchmark index also firming up at its 50-day moving average. A good sign for now whether or not it's going to be able to hold this line at this point remains very much in question. The market is green today, but there's sort of a feeling behind this rally that uh, really not much is happening below the surface. We'll get into some gainers in just a little while, but... Um, a lot of uh, red in my growth screens today. Uh, tech stocks are are still the issue here. S and P 500 up a uh, little more than seven points, half a percent to 14.36. Nasdaq uh, Composite. This is where the trouble in the market is here. A lot of growth names, particularly in tech, under uh, pressure. The Nasdaq Composite fell below its 50-day moving average last week in heavy volume, not making much of an effort to get back above the line today. Tech stocks lagging once again. The Nasdaq Composite only up three-tenths of a percent, about nine points to 3,053. Volume on the Nasdaq Friday, below average, about one and a half billion. It is tracking very close to that level today, maybe just a tad higher. Don't forget we've got the second presidential debate tomorrow night. It's going to be hosted by CNN's Candy Crowley. It's going to be a town town hall format uh, debate. Earlier today, the uh, latest Investors Business Daily tip 2012 presidential election daily tracking poll came out that basically shows a dead heat. Obama 46.9%, Romney 46.6%. So uh, Romney, of course, uh, fared very well in the first debate. Uh, President Obama was uh, uh, perhaps a bit lackadaisical, expect a different uh, different personality from President Obama on uh, Tuesday. I don't think there's any question we're going to we'll see a different Obama on uh, Tuesday, but that uh, that should be fun. Let's check in on the VIX, the CBOE volatility index, sort of a fear gauge in the market. Uh, VIX 
just taking it on the chin again today. It uh, after hitting an intraday high of 1621, it is now down about four and a half percent to 1542. So uh, VIX struggling here, can't get out of its own way. Uh, significant resistance up around the 18 level, which happens to be its 200-day uh, moving average. Taking a look at crude oil today, not much movement in. Uh, the black gold settled at $91.85 a barrel, down one penny, down one penny on the day. That's it for uh, crude oil and gold for December delivery fell $22.10, 1.3% to end at $1737.60, $1,737.60 an ounce. 877-927-6648. Give me a call if you want to talk about this uh, market busy day of of, um, headlines, but before we get to them, let's uh, touch on the U.S. dollar. Currently trading around 79.76. Dollar index uh, still technically challenged at this point, let's say. The um, U.S. dollar index uh, right now is still trading below some signi significant resistance levels, right around 80.70. So uh, right now, dollar index at 79.76, up nine ticks, up a little bit, but not by uh, much today. Bond yields higher, but not by much. The yield on the 10-year note, right around 1.66, 1.67%. 30-year bond at 2.85%. Had some economic data earlier today. Retail sales overall jumped 1.1% in September. That was a little better than estimates of a 0.9% gain. Excluding autos, sales were up an impressive 9 tenths of 1%. That was uh, just about double expectations. So another good reading on retail sales. Take a look at the uh, XRT. Is that the? Uh, I think that's the. Uh, yeah, the Spider S and P Retail Index. Um, this is uh, our, our ETF that sort of holds an eclectic group of uh, retailers. I know Netflix is in the uh, top five holdings here, but you can see the XRT, similar to the Dow and S&P 500, coming right down to that 50-day moving average here and finding support uh, for now. It is uh, only up three-tenths of a percent today to 62.39. So we'll see if that XRT can ultimately find support with conviction at its 50-day simple moving average. Moving on from retail sales, we had another reading on manufacturing activity. The Empire uh, Manufacturing Index showed that manufacturing activity in the New York region contracted in October for the third straight month. The New York Fed said its Empire Manufacturing Index came in at minus 6.2. That was a little worse than expected. Uh, the estimate was for a reading of minus 2.8. Um, the minus 6.2 reading was slightly better than September's reading of minus 10.4, but still overall sluggish manufacturing uh, activity in uh, really all of the uh, the Fed uh, regions, whether it's the, the, the Philly Fed, the Empire Manufacturing, uh, what have you. Pretty good day for shares of Citigroup. Uh, earlier today, the uh, company had uh, pretty good earnings. Uh, Citigroup has been showing excellent relative price strength. Stock is up 4.5% today to 36.32. Pretty good day for financials in general. We'll take a look at the uh, financial select sector spider fund. It is still uh, looking pretty strong here. Still looking at a swing point for 16, of 16.44 for the XLF. Uh, in the meantime, it is uh, holding above its 50-day moving average. Uh, financials outperforming nicely. All right, I'm uh, going to go to our first call for the day, check in with uh, Garo from Kodiak, Alaska. How are you doing today, Garo? How are you, sir? I'm great. <laughs> um, uh, calling regarding MMP, uh, it's, a, it's an oil company. Today yes, uh, today right, Magellan. Magellan, go, yeah. Yeah, Magellan uh, Midstream Partners. Uh, this it's, is MMP. Uh, basically, trans transportation, storage, uh, distribution of uh, petroleum products. Uh, what do you want to do with this, Garo? Are you uh, are you uh, own owning it right now? Are you thinking of uh, getting in? What's uh, what's the story here? Uh, no, sir. Uh, I bought it uh, a while ago at forty three. I sold it forty five. The only problem is that the volume is low on this one. You cannot buy two three thousand shares at a time. 
it, you think it, it will go up from here? Uh, is there is room or this is the max is going to is going to correct itself? Yeah, I don't. I really don't think so. I think that this um, Magellan Midstream Partners is a stock. Obviously, it's made a, a, a huge price move since uh, the market overall market started rallying in uh, in, in late June. Uh, so it has it has gone up uh, quite a bit. I mean, this is uh, in June. This was a, a thirty four dollar stock. Now it's uh, trading around forty forty four bucks uh, a share. So it would look to me. I mean, this is uh, there are a lot of charts out there that look like uh, Magellan's right now, Garl. I mean, the, and that's what kind of leads me to believe that we could be entering a little period here where we could see some consolidation in the market, which is going to cause some consolidation in some of these strong performers like uh, Magellan. We're, we're seeing a lot of tech names starting to uh, consolidate, whether it's, um, you know, an eBay or an Amazon or an Apple. I mean, a lot of these stocks are starting to look like build uh, new bases. So, you know, right now, the uh, Magellan is holding above a key support level, which is 42.21. Uh, it's possible if it does come down there, which would be two points from where it is now, you could you could get a quick trade in there, maybe buy on a support at the 50-day moving average at 42. It's a strong enough stock where in the near term you could see some support at 42, but uh, if it does you know, bounce there, I wouldn't be afraid to take, uh, you know, a couple dollars of uh, profit. But it looks to me like this is probably ready to base and consolidate gains for a little while. Very good. Very good. Very good. May I ask you another one, please, or we don't have time? No, go ahead. I got time. Okay. Uh, today I bought Ross, R-O-S-T, Ross store. Uh, I bought it where it was uh, the close of, uh, close of June the 28th. Uh, it was 6167. Uh, today I bought it at 6180 and it came down to 6170. Uh, I have uh, 500 shares of that today I bought it. Should I keep it? I mean, I'm a profit. Should I keep it or dump it? You know, I mean, it, it, it's right at its 200-day simple moving average, which is a long-term level of support. Uh, this is a strong enough stock where, obviously, it's been under a lot of selling pressure over the past uh, several weeks, but the fact that it came down to its 200-day moving average right around $61 a share, uh, you know, it's probably a low-risk entry point here, but this is one where you could get a little bounce, but I wouldn't, again, if, 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 if you do get a bounce to 63, 64, 65, I'd really look at this more as a as a trade than anything else and I'd have a very tight stop uh, you know underneath that 200 day moving average at, um, at at 61 maybe you set a stop around 59 or 60 or something like that very good very good that's what I thought appreciate yeah. it thank you Ken appreciate okay thank you, girl Ken. thanks for the call yeah. appreciate it yeah. All right, Garo from Kodiak, uh, Alaska. Um, always on some interesting uh, stocks. Appreciate that phone call, 877-927-6648. All right, so we just got done uh, before taking uh, Garo's call, talking about uh, strength and shares of Citigroup uh, today. Let's uh, take another quick look at Citigroup. Uh, earnings were kind of sluggish. They were better than expected, down 26% from a year ago to $0.91 cents a share. Sales down 29% to $18.97 billion. The results were uh, better than expected, but um, and financials leading the market higher today. We'll be right back, folks. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesamento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. 
Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 80% of traders fail because they don't know when to get in or out of a market, and all because no one taught them how to read the signs. You see, the stock market has a universal language called Japanese candlesticks, and each day, the buyers and sellers, the bulls and bears, go to work and build signs. This language has been around for thousands of years, and it's easy to learn. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters Show, and I'm a master sign builder. Download my free report, Candlesticks, The Speed of Trust, on the homepage of TFNN.com for one of the best-kept candlestick secrets. I'll also be conducting an online course Friday, October 19th, to teach you the language of the market's sign builders. You'll learn the best entry and exit techniques and strategies that will create extraordinary rewards. The course will be archived so you can review it as many times as you like because trading or investing without learning this language is like running a red light. It's an accident waiting to happen and there's no airbags or seatbelts. All the details are on the homepage of TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. About 35 minutes left to go in Monday's session, and well, we got a little bounce off the 50-day moving average for the Dow and S&P 500. Tech stocks still lagging out there, but hey, we'll take a good uh, green start to the week here. Mentioned that uh, volume on the New York Stock Exchange and at NASDAQ tracking uh, very close to what we saw Friday, so you know clearly not a day of accumulation in the major averages, but some uh, decent action out there. Financials uh, doing pretty well after Citigroup uh, earlier uh, today reported decent earnings. Uh, last Friday, of course, uh, J.P. Morgan under pressure when it reported earnings. Let's check in on shares of J.P. Morgan today. Up 1.6% to 42.29, and Wells Fargo uh, really took a hit Friday. Numbers weren't too bad at Wells Fargo, but investors sold the stock in spades on Friday. It is actually extending losses uh, today, not participating in the financial rally. Uh, shares of Wells Fargo down 1.3% to 33. 80. Uh, good day. What else is leading the market here? Big Pharma shares of Eli Lilly. Uh, good news here. Stock is up 4.1% today to 52.54. An extended stock, a stock that I can't condone buying up here despite a good day of gains uh, so far today. News around uh, Eli Lilly. 
the company said today that a potential stomach cancer treatment met late stage goals. So good news for uh, Lilly. Also good news from Abbott Labs. Uh, similar uh, strong relative price strength here, yet another stock that is extended. You know, you're not talking about a stock here that is breaking out of a consolidation area. It's a stock that, uh, you know, broke out in early September over 67 bucks a share at uh, 72 here I think you'd be uh, chasing uh, buying it up here but a uh, strong day of uh, performance for Abbott up 3.9 percent to 72 uh, even news around Abbott the company said a mid-stage study showed that its experimental hepatitis C drug cured 99 percent of patients with the most common and hardest to treat type of the uh, disease also uh, amgen a m g n uh, no news here but another drug maker showing good action at its 50-day moving average see in september firmed up at the 50-day line firming up uh, again today up two percent to 8570. So uh, the drug makers uh, acting well. I remember uh, Workday went public on Friday. Uh, Workday is actually extending gains today after a 75% move on Friday on its first day of trading. Workday, impressive, up another 7.3% today to 52.26. Uh, Workday uh, provides on-demand software for human capital management. There's been a lot of consolidation uh, in this area uh, recently. Uh, the stock on Friday, well, it was initially going to price between 21 to 24. Then Workday raised that to 24, 26. It eventually priced at 27 and opened at 48.05 on uh, Friday. Uh, Workday's strong performance on Friday makes it the fifth largest first day gain of the year behind uh, big data software provider Splunk, SPLK. Let's check in on shares of uh, Splunk, see how this uh, this company's doing. Under a lot of pressure, you can see this is, uh, you know, had a great first day of uh, trading uh, earlier this year, but uh, Splunk recently uh, cut below its 50-day moving average. Uh, looks like it's ready to base and consolidate, consolidate gains. Splunk recently trading around 32.28, up 3.1% on the day. But now when the stock broke below that 50-day moving average, the 33.72 level could be uh, resistance for now. So uh, I'd be careful about uh, trying to catch Splunk on sale here. Also, uh, Millennial Media had a great first day of trading earlier this year. It was up uh, 92 percent. Uh, another stock kind of working its way higher since uh, early August. Uh, it's made a move from 10 up to about 16 bucks a share. The stock is down 12 cents today to 15.90. That's another uh, big IPO winner. And then uh, we'll also take a look at BNNY. Uh, Bunny soared uh, 89% on its first day of trading. Uh, Bunny still hanging in there. Decent looking uh, chart here holding above its 50 day moving average at 43.59. Shares up 26 cents today to 45.24. So Workday on Friday, the fifth largest first day gain of the year. Uh, just went over some uh, other top performing IPOs on their first day of uh, trading. And uh, as we head into break number two, uh, SoftBank, Japan's third largest mobile carrier, court carrier bought a 70% stake in Sprint Nextel. The deal is uh, valued at just over $20 billion. And uh, we'll see uh, Sprint made a big move on Thursday last week. It is down five cents today to 568. We'll be right back, folks. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a 
a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. TFNN and Great Panther Silver have teamed up for another exciting silver giveaway. The Great Panther Silver Halloween giveaway will be taking place at the end of October, and for three full days we'll be giving away silver coins and bars every hour from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. to one lucky winner randomly chosen. There's no purchase necessary. For more information and to fill out your registration form today, simply visit the front page of TFNN.com where you'll find all the details. October 29th, 30th, and 31st, we'll choose one lucky winner that will receive a silver coin or bar courtesy of Great Panther Silver. Winners will be announced live on the air each hour for three full days. Don't miss out on this great opportunity to win free silver from TFNN and Great Panther Silver. Register today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and for more information on Great Panther Silver, you can click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex, symbol GPL, or on the Toronto Stock Exchange, symbol GPR. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about technical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Indices holding gains uh, nicely as uh, we approach Monday's close, about 25 minutes left to go in Monday's session. The Dow and S&P 500 sporting the same percentage gains here, up about six-tenths of a percent on the day. Dow up 84 points to 13,000. 412 and the S&P 500 up 9 points to 1437. Tech stocks lagging a little bit. NASDAQ up 14 and a half points to 3058. Uh, mentioned some good follow through for uh, Workday. It uh, went public on Friday. How about uh, KYTH? I know we uh, talked about uh, this this company as well. It went public on uh, Thursday. The stock was up uh, about 24% on its first day of trading, but a uh, really strong day for the stock today, up another 8.6% to 2075. 
and uh, Kythera again pr uh, priced last week it was uh, going to price between 14 and 16 it priced at 16 at the high end of its range and uh, again up 24 percent on its first day of trading Workday, uh, excuse me, Kythera Biopharmaceuticals, KYTH, is uh, commercializing an injectable treatment for double chin. So, uh, interesting uh, technology here, and investors uh, seem to like prospects for Kythera Pharmaceuticals up another 8.6% to 2075. And uh, IPO market uh, a bit counterintuitive, a bit ironic with the broad market seemingly a little bit on the ropes here to see this uh, IPO market uh, acting uh, so well. Uh, shares of Texas Instruments. Uh, this has been a uh, laggard stock for uh, some time. Stock getting a little bit of a lift today, up 3.3% 3 .3 to 28.18. Uh, there was uh, an Israeli daily newspaper that published a report saying that uh, Amazon is considering buying Texas Instruments mobile chip business. I will uh, leave it at that. I've had not heard of this uh, Israeli publication before, but uh, shares of Texas Instruments getting a lift on that news again up 3.3 percent to 28.18. Had um, uh, well, let's talk about Intel because it's reporting earnings after the close tomorrow. So we'll stay in the chip maker space shares of Intel. Uh, up, outperforming the NASDAQ today, up 1.5% to 2180. Question is, has all the bad news been priced into Intel? Uh, it's possible. I mean, remember, this was a $27 stock back in August. It is now uh, close to $22 a share. Expectations are so low for uh, Intel that it's possible we could see if there if there's any glimmer of hope in its earnings report tomorrow, uh, it's possible we could could see a little bounce in the stock. This is uh, not a name that I would target for my ultimate growth stocks model portfolio. Uh, fundamentals are still very much in question at Intel, and um, you know definitely the company faces a lot of uh, strategic challenges uh, going forward. But uh, earnings Tuesday expected to come in at 50 cents a share down 23% from a year ago with sales down 7% to 13.2 billion so again expectations very low for Intel uh, possible we could see buyers come into the uh, stock. Had uh, several analyst upgrades today. Let's take a look at shares of Alliant Tech Systems. This is an aerospace and uh, defense firm after early strength. The stock is uh, near its session low, but still up 2.6% to 53.29. It hit an intraday high of 54.67. Um, FBR Capital Markets upgraded Alliant Tech Systems, ATK, to outperform from market perform $65 uh, price target. Uh, another interesting name here, Wirehauser. This is a forest products company, WY, on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, I'll tell you what, this one has been behaving itself uh, during a time when a lot of stocks are seeing a lot of technical damage. Big sellers coming into stocks. Wirehauser sure is uh, holding its own here, up 3.7% today to 27.22. It uh, has been consolidating gains since uh, September, just moving sideways, holding above that 26 uh, price level. So a uh, very strong acting stock here, Wirehauser. And um, it did get uh, an upgrade today from RBC Capital Markets to outperform from sector uh, perform. So WY uh, looking good here. And uh, let's check in on Intuitive Surgical because this is another uh, former leader that is set to report earnings later this week. In fact, uh, tomorrow. Intuitive Surgical will also be out with uh, earnings. Uh, J.P. Morgan out with a timely upgrade to overweight from uh, neutral. This is a pretty, it's a pretty, pretty bold call here ahead of earnings, especially with Intuitive Surgical acting as uh, weak as it is. It um, still has some some serious overhead supply or resistance to uh, work through, but stock up 3.4 percent today to 5.1140. It is. Uh, 
you know, a $500 plus stock here, but uh, resistance at the 200 day moving average here at uh, 516, some additional resistance at 520. Uh, it's possible, you know, you could see good numbers from Intuitive Surgical, but these, a lot of these medical device makers have been under uh, quite a bit of uh, pressure. Last week it was Edwards uh, Life Sciences that. Um, uh, warned on revenue that uh, fueled a lot of selling in the medical device maker space and uh, and uh, don't forget that these uh, medical device makers are also kind of cloudy fundamentals uh, with Obamacare and this medical device maker tax that some are going to be subjected to uh, that could result in uh, weak earnings going forward so definitely some uncertainty around the medical device maker space um, you know, Intel, uh, Intuitive Surgical's lackluster price performance pretty much since the, the summer, uh, in my view, is solely uh, because of uh, concerns about slowing growth prospects. Uh, Intuitive Surgical, when you look back at recent quarters, you do see very, very consistent bottom line and top line growth. Uh, this time around, you're, supposed, you're going to see another quarter of growth with earnings up 15% from a year ago to $3.50 a share. Sales uh, will be up 20% year over year to 534 Point nine million. Uh, the market right now, when you see a stock that has been technically damaged like Intuitive Surgical has, it's generally because the market is uh, is is not is not confident that uh, it, the company is going to be able to maintain its uh, growth rate. Uh, even uh, with the stock up 3.4 percent today, its uh, trailing PE ratio is 35. Its forward PE is around 28. So. Uh, you know, it's still a pricey stock valuation-wise, and with a valuation like that, you'd expect this a company that should be able to grow uh, at a minimum of 20%, 25%, and I'm not so sure that Intuitive Surgical is going to be able to, to do that. So uh, we'll see what Intuitive Surgical has to say after the close uh, tomorrow. But again, J.P. Morgan upgrades the stock ahead of uh, earnings. Take a look at shares of uh, Google. Google's also going to report earnings this week. Very, very busy week of earnings after hitting an intraday low today of $730.70. Shares of Google up near its uh, session high, but still down $4.54 to $740.21. Uh, a couple of uh, analyst notes today on Google. Oppenheimer raised its price target to 800 and Piper Jeffries, Gene Munster, who uh, is a noted Apple analyst, Gene Munster uh, re reiterated his overweight rating on Google and raised his price target to 834 from 717. To me, uh, Google looks vulnerable here. Looks like uh, a visit to the 50-day moving average is a distinct possibility that would be down around the 705 level thereabouts but uh, again possible that we could see good num good numbers from uh, Google ahead of its earnings report on I believe it's uh, Thursday here let me see here Thursday yeah Google reports on Thursday so busy day of uh, tech earnings CF Industries another strong performer here definitely looking uh, vulnerable CF Industries I believe is yeah trading below its 50-day moving average now another name out here that has been a tremendous performer since uh, mid-June but uh, definitely looking long in the tooth here down a dollar 29 to 209 at 22 Dolman Rose downgraded the fertilizer maker to hold from buy saying that higher corn prices are priced into the stock already. Could it be? It's 45 minutes into the show and we have not looked at a chart of Apple. I suppose that's true. Will miracles never cease? All right, shares of Apple today uh, up $3.74 near its uh, session high. Apple under pressure, like a lot of other tech stocks uh, early in the day, hits an intraday low of 6.2385, now trading around 6.3345. Still a lot of uh, technical damage done to Apple in recent weeks. Definitely some signs of mild institutional selling here, probably funds taking profits. Uh, I don't know. I think it's too quick to say that fundamentals here are very much in, in question. But um, the fact that it's gone down from you know 700 down to around $630 a share, um, you know, it's worth uh, worth paying attention to. I don't uh, think Apple is a buy down here. This is a stock that I recently took profits in for my Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio. I'm uh, not going to be revisiting this one anytime soon. I believe earnings for Apple are due October uh, 20. 
fifth, uh, and we'll monitor it and see uh, and see how it trades. But um, technical damage done in recent week. Uh, recent weeks is noteworthy, uh, makes me not want to be a buyer of the stock uh, right now. And uh, then we'll check in on shares of uh, Metasys AMED. This one's been a laggard pretty much since early September. The health uh, provider, home health uh, provider, actually has a new agreement with insurer Humana, but not such a great agreement because uh, Humana restructured the deal and uh, Emeticis is going to receive about half the revenue that it did uh, with a prior deal it had with Humana. So uh, investors hammering the stock today down 10.1% to 1198. You can see Emeticis takes out its 200-day moving average with uh, conviction. Other names are under pressure today. Let's... Uh, check out shares of LinkedIn. This is a name that I also took profits in recently. And uh, LinkedIn, after hitting an intraday low of 108.50, it has uh, bounced back, trading near its session high, up 90 cents now to 111.31, still underneath its 50-day moving average at 113. So you know, bright growth prospects at LinkedIn, but a stock, to, to me, looks like it's ready to uh, possibly start working on the right side of a new base here. But, um, you know, it, it, it it's come hard off that 125 high. As it works its way higher, it's going to have uh, invariably overhead supply uh, to work through, which uh, can be challenging for a growth stock like uh, LinkedIn. Remember, it wasn't that long ago when Tosco Tractor Supply was setting up in a good base, looked like a uh, breakout over 100 bucks a share would be uh, possible. It did that in early October, earlier this month, and then boom, six straight declines, takes out its 50-day moving average today, hits an intraday low of 93.60. Tough one to handle here because it, it hit a low of 93.60. Now it's trading at 96.89. So... Uh, up uh, more than three points up uh, off its uh, low, only down 29 cents, um, and again, trying to rally back above the 50-day moving average. Uh, this is another name that I'm um, just not interested in uh, in owning here. It looked like it had potential. You can see this uh, uh, price bar here when it broke out over 100 bucks a share, uh, but that was quickly a failed uh, breakout. So that is the you know, main issue that I'm seeing right now in my growth screens, just not seeing a whole lot out there to buy. And actually, I don't mind being in that situation. I've got, you know, six or seven stocks in my Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio right now that I'm content to, to hold on to. Uh, I do have some that are... Uh, I, I don't have big cushions in. They're going to be reporting earnings uh, soon. Um, that's always a challenging uh, situation as an investor. Do you do you hold on to the stock? Do you give it a chance to work after after earnings? But you know, by and large, my screens are. Growth screens are either filled with uh, stocks that have been under a lot of selling pressure recently, uh, stocks that I was looking at owning at some point. Now their technical uh, pictures are uh, a little more worse for the wear. And then there are other stocks that are holding up well, but are too extended past uh, proper buy points. So right now, classic situation where uh, screens are telling me to stay conservative here and kind of sit mostly on the sidelines and watch how third quarter earnings play out because it's uh, it's likely going to be a volatile third quarter earnings season uh, but we do have uh, quite a few names set to report uh, today we've gone through um, we've gone through several of them uh, already but um, uh, another one set to report uh, eBay yet another name that I took profits in recently uh, eBay showing very squirrely action in its uh, chart after recently hitting a uh, intraday high over uh, 50 it has been under selling pressure big wide uh, price spread today hits a high of 4807 a low of 4625 it is uh, down 1% today to 4739 and uh, again Intel uh, excuse me, eBay reports uh, later this week on Wednesday, day after tomorrow. So we'll take a look at a few more earnings reports in Techland when we come back. Appreciate you listening. Always do. You're listening to Breakout Investing on TFNN. We will be right back. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. 
Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesamento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor, and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m., and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator, also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks, to Breakout Investing, checking in on the markets before we put the finishing touches on today's program. Dow Jones Industrials at its session high, trading up 100 points to 13,429. S&P 500 also near its session high as we um, close impressively here today. The uh, bogey is now up 12 points, eight tenths of a percent to 1440, and the Nasdaq joining the party as well. It is 
lagging the NYSE indices, but still near its session high as well, up 21 and a half points to 3,065. Folks, uh, don't forget about the Great Panther Silver Halloween giveaway at TFNN. That's going to be happening between October 29th and 31st. So on October 29th, October 30th, and October 31st, uh, TFNN and Great Panther Silver will be giving away 27 pieces of silver for uh, Halloween uh, for every hour between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. Eastern. All you have to do is register for free right on the homepage of TFNN.com for your chance to win a free piece of uh, silver. And if you would like to try out 30 days free of my growth stock newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, you can do that right on the homepage of TFNN.com. Just click on the newsletter tab and then investment newsletters. That's um, the easiest way to uh, do it. Coming up uh, tomorrow, in terms of economic data, we've got the latest reading on consumer prices for uh, September. We've also got industrial production capacity utilization and then on Wednesday housing starts building permits for September boy these home builders continue to show relative uh, price strength nothing in the way of sell signals uh, in this group uh, ITB you can see here the Dow Jones US home construction index fund up 3.3 percent today to 1999 so far respecting its 50-day moving average some uh, top performers in the group Lennar LEN out excuse me outperforming nicely today up 3.8 percent to 3713 and uh, Ryland group R Y L also outperforming nicely up four and a half percent to 30. 97. So uh, we'll get more housing data on Wednesday with housing starts and building permits, uh, weekly jobless claims on Thursday, the Philly Fed on Thursday, and then finally ending the week with existing home sales for uh, September. After the close today, let's uh, check in on WD40. People are often surprised to hear that this is a publicly traded company. Uh, it is WD40. Of course, they make that um, that spray lubricant that doesn't make things squeak. I think every household probably has got a few bottles of it. WD-40 down 33 cents, not participating in the market rally today ahead of earnings after the close. It is uh, trading around 51.40, still holding above its 50-day moving average, but not by much. The 50-day line, $50.94. Uh, we mentioned uh, Intuitive Surgical. Uh, they're going to be coming out with earnings on Tuesday, as well as uh, Goldman Sachs, uh, Fortinet, IBM, uh, Intel. Uh, so earnings season is really going to uh, kick into gear uh, this week on Wednesday. Bank of America, PepsiCo, American Express, uh, eBay, and Mellanox Technologies. Uh, shares of eBay uh, not looking all that great. It is um, trading up near a session high, but not participating in the rally today. Down 31 cents to 47.54. I'll also be interested to hear what Mellanox Technologies has to say uh, when it reports earnings on Wednesday as well. As well, Stock looking a little vulnerable here ahead of earnings. Coming up next, the Tom O'Brien Show on TFNN from 4 to 6 Eastern. I'll see you back here tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern, for another edition of Breakout Investing. Have a great afternoon, everyone.